to former Professor Abedjibe Ade Ibijola, is a professor at the University of Johannesburg and the founder of Kingsman Academy. Professor Abedjibe Ade is a professor in artificial intelligence and application at the University of Johannesburg. Is an academic whose research interest has a real world impact on the industry and society. Having supervised many masters and PhD students, he creates innovation in driving the fourth industrial revolution, building multi domain artificial intelligence systems to tackle economic, business, and societal problems. Professor Abedjide has about 15 years of work experience in academics and IT consulting revolving around software development, artificial intelligence, games development, and financial markets. Abedjide has won prizes at three recent essay government actions, second place winners of the DPSA Acathon 2018, with a team of 30 students, the overall best innovation award of the leading for IR Acathon 2019, with his team of four students, and two awards with a total prize of 130,000 rand at the CITA MDP 413 at 2019, team of 15 students. He is an FIF rated researcher and won the Dean's Award for the top senior lecturer in the College of Business and Economics at the University of Johannesburg. Abadide has won or secured about 2 million approximately grant in research and innovation grants. Professor Abedjide is the founder and the lead of the research cluster on formal structures, algorithm, and industrial application. He is also the pioneer leader of the Techno Premiership Center at the University of Johannesburg. He is highly interested in building the next generation of leaders, which he called the only lasting legacy, hence his availability today. In, 29, in 2017, Professor Abedjide founded the Kingsman Academy, consisting of outstanding students in both character and academic performance, to eradicate unemployment in South Africa and use technology to solve societal problems. The Kingsman Academy has developed technological projects such as PLG, PLAGI, Plagi, Warfare Accounting App, Loss Aversion Game. SAT lab, web app, and development game. We want to learn how Professor Bajide has used adaptable military strategies in building such a great team that is available to produce solutions to societal problems, which is the hallmark of leadership. So over to you, sir, Professor Abedjide. You can take the floor now. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Cinderella. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, colleagues and all delegates here, PhD students, master students, and for the organizers. David, you and your team are doing a great job. I'm super impressed with this move. This is a great move. Um, everyone, when it comes to leadership, like Simon said, so by the way, the previous speaker, Simon, is one of the soldiers in my own Kingsman Academic. So there could be a, a couple of overlaps in the things we're going to talk about because, of course, you, you saw he spent the time on uh, talking about military strategies and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to leadership, there's so many ideologies and philosophies that sometimes you are so confused, which one should I be? Should I be the leader that kisses the babies, you know, like you're just so nice, so kind, and nobody gets anything done under you? Or do you want to be an extreme right where everybody's afraid of you, but they get their job done? So I think it's always about getting that balance. And that's why I am here to share my experience with you. So for me, it's not a theory. It's what, one thing I've tried out over the years and it's worked like, like a charm. But I wouldn't call it a, a silver bullet anyway. I wouldn't say it works in every environment. So uh, like the previous um, speaker said, I think um, uh, Ms. Moradeo, she was talking about conflict resolution. That's a skill you always need because people come together, they always uh, disagree every time. That's, that's just human nature. And like Simon said as well, um, those, those strategies you have to, you might sometimes have to lead from the back. So uh, it, it's, it's such a dynamic topic. So I don't love my talk. I hope everybody can, can first reflect on the kind of leader they are if they've led before. And secondly, um, 
Secondly, they, they, they can also decide what kind of leader they want to be if they have not led at, at some level or some stage. So um, first, let me talk about the motivation for this. For me, I for about four or five years ago, I created this space called the Kingsman Academic. So um, the motivation was basically many people around, they want things, they want money, they want qualifications, but what it takes to get those things, these guys, they don't, they're not willing to do it. So I just thought, you know, I could help with my story. My story is so simple. My story is that I'm, I've never been the brightest guy in the room. I mean, I'll be delusional if I think I was the brightest guy in the room every time. But I've been the most hard and the most disciplined guy. So if you thought you were prepared when you meet me, you, you realize you were not actually prepared. So that was who I was, uh, getting my career up, up, up and running. So I was trying to share that part as well to say to, to my students, to my postdocs, to my PhDs, and, and also my uh, industry engaging guys that, that trust me with their careers to say, you know what? It's about hard work and dedication. This thing will never fail you. Other topics like race, like religion and culture, those things are just pulled over your eyes to blind you from the actual fact, which is if you are that good, if you're that prepared, you get the opportunity. Not because uh, you can't play that card every time, that because I, didn't, I, I, was, I was not one to three, that's why I didn't get the opportunity. And that goes for anybody that is uh, finishing a postgraduate degree right now, hoping to stay back in South Africa. It's all about that excellence. So, so I wanted to copy paste that technique across the board. So I created that uh, establishment. So I'm gonna talk a, a, lot, a lot about that. So my talk is gonna be an introduction of, of course. By the way, David, were you the one that wrote that profile? David, did you write that profile? Well, kudos. Uh, yes, sir. I see you tried. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, David. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, kudos. Great job, David. Um, all right. So uh, introduction first, I'll try to give you my background, where I'm coming from. Then I'll tell you about what I feel are the basics uh, of leadership. Some of them you find in literature. Some of them are the colleagues that I've spoken earlier on. I've spoken about them. Then two styles that always come. So there are different, almost 10 theories of leadership or 11 of them. But two of them always come up every time, which is the democratic one where you tell people, what do you want? And if they tell you what they want, then you do it. The other one is the military one where you tell them what you believe is right and you make them do it. Then the style that I've been using for the past five years to build an empire that I'm building, and that empire is growing every day. And if you are listening to me right now, if you want to join me, join me with your efforts as well, please, you're welcome on board. Then I'll tell you the lessons I've learned over the, over the years. Introduction, I'm a computer scientist. Uh, over and over, like bachelor's honors, master's PhD, computer science. My early career was in Nigeria. So a bachelor's was from Nassau State University in Kefi. I had a, 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 a master's from Futa Akure, then I had a PhD from VET here in South Africa. Um, I've got about 14 years of experience across industry and academia. Then I'm in AI and applications like, um, like um, my intro introduction says. And I'm gonna take Professor Lubambi up on the offer uh, and I'm also keen to meet you, Prof. Anytime you're ready, I'm ready to go. When you're back, uh, enjoy Futa. When you're back, we will talk about, uh, about collaborations. Over the years I've taught, uh, my teaching is often taking the two shapes, either applied or theoretical computer science are the two things I teach. When it's applied, it's about programming, basically, uh, because this is where the future jobs are. Algorithms, that's the science of speaking to computers. I have the practical skill to create different technologies, so I actually show my students those things as well. Then theoretical, these are the mathematical parts of things. I enjoy math because it's, it's, it's a scientific way to communicate amongst uh, researchers and all of that. So um, yes, the reason why my job is very important in my opinion is that I need to teach people how to program in science and engineering, even on the street, a layman on the street. Because everybody keeps saying there's no, there are no jobs and there are many jobs in this space. So if you can learn how to do this thing, trust me, it's the future. And I needed the Kingsman Academic and I need people to have military mindset to be, to be able to get out of bed in the morning. And then I still have to treat them with some empathy. But I'm going to show you all of that. That's very shocking. So basically, like most academic, I do teaching and uh, postgraduate supervision. I, I love to compete. I love to win. I don't, I don't hide that. I don't, I don't deny it. I don't think that should be embarrassing for anyone to say it. Um, teaching and mentoring, I'm so keen on leaving my legacy with people like uh, David uh, or the Anchor Red out. So I, I, I believe the reason why most people don't succeed is their mindset. It's not because they don't have the talent. So I, I don't believe someone is out there without talent. I don't believe so. Grit, um, 
Grit is the same thing as um, hard work and education. It's ability to get up every day and go at it again. Character can make all the difference. So I'm, I'm always big on character. You want to you wanna meet someone for the first time, be at your best behavior, even if you're a demon, so that you can secure some opportunities for yourself. Uh, research, of course, I'm in here on applications. I'm also in algorithms in general. Then this is my uh, little social project or passion project, as you might want to call it. I call it the Kingsman Academic. So it's where I try to bring people together to tell them what they're doing wrong and then help them to grow their careers, teach them a lot of skill and get the best out of young people. So, and that's what I'm going to be talking. I'm going to tell you about my leadership uh, strategies in that space, not necessarily the theory of leadership in total, in general, that's, that's too much broader of a topic. Then I do some work in the industry and society at large, job creation. Job creation is another passion that I have. Um, funding, of course, and some examinations for institutions. So that's picture kind of like brings everything together. So the Kingsman Academic, uh, like I said, the story is that one, I am passionate about training the best people that can get out there and balance knowledge and character at the same time. There are many smart people in the world. Some of them, you cannot even stand to them. You cannot even listen to what they're saying because before they begin to say something, they're like, firstly, all of you guys are dumb. So, so this is the right way. Then everybody loses interest up front. Nobody wants to listen anymore. Unemployment, like I said, skills, uh, unskilled graduates. Uh, as Nigerians, we know what that is. Like uh, you speak to graduates, NYC graduates in Nigeria. They can't even write simple emails. Um, the educational system has suffered from uh, a loop of feedback. So you train people that are not strong, they go back, they become lecturers, then they mess other people up coming behind. So we, we suffer from that, even though it's not the politically correct thing to say, but it's, it's there. Continuity of excellence, that's, a, that's a kind of like a greedy one for me. I wanted to retire and find thousands of people in the system that I've trained and they excel the way I did. So that, that's one, that's one passion of, uh, personal uh, agenda that I have behind all of this. Then breaking barriers and records, absolutely. I believe in a one lifetime, you have to win everything and do everything. And in fact, fun fact, by the time I, I'm planning that when I'm 50, I want to have five bouts in professional boxing. You know, just so that I, I just enjoy the rush of stepping into the ring, lacing up the gloves and winning a round of, of a boxing fight. Bottom line, you just need to do the most you can do with one lifetime and not just sit around and watch the lifetime just pass you by. So, and of course, finally, I don't believe in the idea of knowledge without value. Um, like people know so much and they have, yet they have no job. They cannot transfer that knowledge. They cannot turn that knowledge to business value and they cannot solve any problem in society. That is so wrong. So uh, one of the reasons why I created the space was as well to ask you, I don't care if you're in theoretical phys physics, is there any part of what you've learned that we can turn into real product in the, in the, in the society? in the business realm and make some money and, and employ people and make the world a better place and not just the, the integrals and, and all the boring stuff without any applications. All right, that's it. So basics, leadership, I'm just going to share my opinion about basics. Some of the things are from theory, things you probably already know. Um, I believe when it comes to leadership, you have to define it your own way. I don't think anybody just has to copy. I want to be the kind of leader this person is. Because if you want to be, what if your character doesn't suit it? There are things I do that if you try, you will run down, no matter of fact. Like, uh, because for me, it's natural. You know, people, people, is nat people are very natural with me. But some people don't have people's skill. Does it mean they don't, cannot be leaders? I don't think so. I think they just have to find a leadership style that suits their own needs their own needs to, and then tailor the leadership skills around those things. For me, I just like sitting there with young people all day chatting about how to change the world. Um, so there's no one way to, to lead. There are many theories that exist. And from literature, you can find these theories. It's, it's quite a long list. Uh, authoritarian, that's the one we call military. That's when I'm gonna also talk about how I kind of adapted some, some strength from that style into what I, I've built, which is the Kingsman Academic. Participative, that's democracy. I believe strongly if you allow everybody to decide what they want, people don't know what they want. I believe so. Strongly, even in politics and society in general, if you just go, US election is a typical example. It's split 50-50 every time. Uh, Democrats and Republicans split philosophy, split ideology about everything in life, about gay rights, about abortion rights. Everybody's just all over the place. So if you need to actually create value in the business or somewhere in the realm where it's important for you to succeed, 
and you allow people to decide absolutely like 100 percent you're going to be all over the place so and authoritarian when the strategy is correct and the dream is right you sometimes have to tell people what to do i know it doesn't sound pretty but that is what it is uh delegative um this one works very well in engineering you just get experts and you give them portfolios tell hey you are an expert in this could do this and they just the problem here is that sometimes the, the experts kind of disagree and then everything falls apart visionary and coaching i come in here as well these are my styles of leadership personally in the kingston academic i want to sell you a dream uh, that's going to happen in the next 10 15 years 20 years before you even get started so i do a lot of visionary work in my coaching space in my leadership space then I do uh, literally coaching, like bring the laptop, let me show you. Like Simon mentioned uh, in the previous talk, like sometimes you have to lead from the front. So I do a lot of that in the space. Affiliative is when you tell your followers to say, you know what, guys, follow, let, let's all be the boot on the ground and everything. And, and uh, this time, my problem with it is that people get too confused who is in charge. You know, um, I'll, I'll explain these things to you as we proceed. Pace setting, this one, a leader can die with this one because... A leader tries to go from the front by leading by example. And then when people are weak in their teams, they say, let, let me do it for you. And let me do it for you makes people weaker and weaker by the time and the leader has so much work to do. Transactional is simple. In trans transactional, you, you lead by two things. Uh, either you are paying benefits to people or you are just coding them very hard. So it's about gains and losses. So you lead someone, if they do well, you appraise them. That's like most establishments do. Like when you're a student, when you do well, you pass your exams. When you don't do well, you, you fail your exams, something like that. So it's about um, gains and, and, and all of that. All right, so the questions that are common ac across many leadership topics are these questions uh, from my own experience as well. Are you ready? Uh, are you ready? I don't, I don't, there should be no pressure to lead if you are not ready. Even if people reach out to you and you see a lot of that in South Africa, people that are not ready. Uh, the government reaches out to them and say, hey, you, because you have a PhD, come and lead us. And if you know you're not ready, there's no shame. I don't think there's any shame in saying, no, sorry, guys, I'm not ready. So to be ready, you need things like average knowledge of your terrain, of the subjects you're leading on, the operations of the space. If you are asked to lead a bank and you don't even know how a bank operates, you're going to flop. Administration, which is a lot of work. This is part where you organize meetings, organize portfolios do things at certain times in a particular way. Management, like Simon mentioned, management is very key as well. Management of talent, of skills, of resources, agility. Agility is key. You I mean, you have to up and run it. You cannot be the guy who falls uh, sick five days in a, in a month and be, and be ready to, to, to run a, a military squad of, of 2,000 people. So health and, and work rate and all of those things come into agility over there. Can you drive is the next question. Leadership by doing. So... It's easy. Everything is easy when you're saying it. But when I put you in the, those shoes and I say, do it for us, so that I say, so can, you, can you be able to do it? Because if you can, then you get good followership at times. Do you feel too much? So if you are very emotional, I, I think you have to work on that first before you jump into some leadership seats. Do you feel nothing? That is out of Hitler kind of stuff. That is too dangerous as well. So if you feel nothing, then it's a problem. Do you feel just enough? I think that's the place a leader has to be. When you have empathy and yet when somebody's lying to you, you're like, no, I don't like that. That's, that's not true. That's, I don't take that. So managing feelings and emotion is one key part. Are you leading your dream team? So if you ever have the opportunity of building your own team yourself, like I do in the Kingsman Academic, trust me, by all means, get competent people together. Make sure your team is also very diverse because certain things you can only see from another angle. So uh, get some religious diversity there, uh, some get some race diversity there, just get your diversity going because you, you get to learn a lot yourself as a leader. What really matters? I don't think it's so much of what kind of leader you want to be, no matter how, how you might like it, I want to be like MQ, Abiola, whatever. I think it's more of who will you be leading and where will you be leading? So it's like who and where. So your, your audience can actually tell you, inform you as well the kind of leader you should be in the space. Like if you're in the military, you need to be tough, you need to be strong. If you're not looking strong and tough, Nobody wants to follow you. Everybody thinks you're weak. However, if you're in the banking sector, you have to be an expert in that stuff so that people respect you based on your knowledge. If you're leading like a, a house fellowship in a church, you have to be extremely empathetic, you know, where people look at you as the person they can talk to about things. So, so it depends on who you're leading and where you be leading. I think that's one key question. In my own example, I was leading young people that if I did not show them the way, they would not be lost. You'll probably be smoking weed somewhere or impregnating women somewhere or 
or just doing stuff that are very off. So I needed to sell them a dream and I needed to be on their head every time, like put a gun to the head and say, hey, just do that, don't ask questions. And I needed the military strategy part of things. Is this talk for you? If you think you are a result oriented, results is everything about your space, absolutely, you need some, some of the things I'm gonna talk about. So what is my leadership style like? This is what it's like, Kingsman style, I call it Kingsman style. On coaching, I'm, I'm, I employ coaching leadership skill when I'm talking about skill. So I want to be, if I want to teach you stuff, then I lead by coaching. I'm a visionary as well. Authoritative, authoritarian, I bring that up when it's work time and it's structure time. I don't want you to give me excuses. Uh, that get your shit together kind of thing. Uh, military drills, of course, I don't leave you for a whole week not knowing what your schedule is. You know, at this time, you should be do it, doing this. You should be up at this time. And if you cannot make up, you better have a good reason, kind of leadership strategy in the participative. So the only time I allow like strong voices from everyone is when we are talking about fun or social gathering. I can ask you, do you want us to go and party in Rosebank or Santon? That one I cannot let you decide. You know what I'm saying? But are we going to go to work tomorrow or not? I can't let you decide that because the answer you're going to give me is I know let's rest tomorrow. And that answer is counterproductive. So on empathy, fun, and social, then I, um, I, I transform into the soft guy. I become your so-called democratic leader. So facts, um, in my example, it's proven to work. Uh, I believe I have been trusted by the people I lead, all right? And I believe my pe the people that I lead as well are very hungry to learn. So it, it's super efficient. Uh, and they didn't come to me all hungry to learn how to sell them their dream. And I'm gonna explain that as well. Democratic style. Um, like I said, do not ask people what they want. Everybody wants different things. So you have to be able to take some responsibility of leadership and say, this is what I think is good for everyone, right? You're not God, but you have to do it. What if people don't want, um, they know what they want. Okay, so most people you might be, might be under your tutelage, might be people that need a hard motivation. They need to almost force them to do stuff. So you have to do that, you know? Uh, in my space, I do that sometimes. Uh, I even kind of kick someone off the project so that two weeks after that, when they're not called into any meeting, they become like, I've, I miss that. I miss making the money they make in my team. And as they call me up, prof, I'm ready. I think I, I'm ready to change. I'm like, okay, yeah, you get a second shot. But if I keep patching you up and leaving you in that seat and I know your potential is better, but you're just taking advantage of my empathy or my, then I kick you out kind of thing. Those things don't sound pretty, but sometimes you have to do them. Um... In democratic style, the problem is the weakest link in the, in the chain. Um, if you have too many weak people, then you won't get results out, all right? People that cannot even get up when the alarm clocks go off. Um, people that are scheduled gym sessions and they cancel them because they are not in the mood. I mean, changing the world is not about mood. It's about, it's about responsibility. And, and when you understand that, the weight just is on your shoulder. Uh, if you ever ask an employee, like I said, do you want to come to work? Almost every employee in the world will tell you no. You know what I'm saying? So that means you have to decide for them. An example of this is when people vote to the wrong leaders. You're wondering what's going on because when it's election time, they eat a, a couple of bags of rice and everybody's fine. Another example is when you're raising your children. If you ever ask your child what they want to eat at the age of six, between five and say 15, you're probably going to raise a very obese child. Because they can tell you they want ice cream three times a day, but you as the leader must know that's bad for your, for your audience. So military style now, this is something I adapted in my space. It's characterized, uh, characterized with this keyword, high performance, regiment, regimental, they're regimented, discipline, there's a timing, they're choreographed, meaning everybody knows what they should be doing at that time. So there's a choreography about it, one vision, order and executions. I'll tell you what to do if you're at an operational chain of my command, you just execute, no questions. However, if you're at a strategic chain of my command or you're at a tactical chain of my command, then you can ask me questions. You can query me, you can give me suggestions. But if you're a foot soldier, you better just march forward and execute. Practice, uh, an example of a foot soldier is when you have like a PhD student and you say to them, uh, this proposal does not have an objective. And they say, I have a prof, I saw another proposal in the Northwest University that has no objective, you see. That's wrong because they have to just listen to you because they are operational at that stage. Um, so muscle memory, people get to practice so much they know things in and out. Uh, teamwork, everybody trusts their team members because they're competent. Precision, assessment, objective skill. You don't rate people differently, not because of your feelings. So if some guy is Nigerian now because he's Nigerian, you give him 10. The other guy is not Nigerian, give him eight. 
you lose the trust of your team. So you don't do the, something like that. Honor, uh, ability to make people accept their, their mess up when they mess up. So I always call some of my students and say, hey, what, what was the instruction? What did you do? Do you want to reflect on that? Do you want to write me an email tomorrow? And they come back to me and say, you know, prof, I was wrong. I was supposed to do one, two, three. Now I'm doing four, five, six. I'm going to revert back to the description of the task and I'm going to get it done. So that's what you want. Ability for, to hone it. Not like it looks like you're blaming them. They have to understand it. That's very military stuff. Responsibility, uniform identity. For every one of the guys in the Kingsman Academic, they believe they're a Kingsman Academic, even though their gender may suggest they're female, but they still identify with that brand. So it's very important when you have a team. Um, an example of military effectiveness is in sleep, con uh, sleep management. You know, when it's time to wake up, everybody gets up. Also, there are three layers, like I said, operational are the guys that they need so much guidance, just tell them what to do, help them to do it. Tactical guys are the guys above that layer and strategic guys are the brains that actually move everything together. So I kind of like this design because it's worked for me. And if you apply it in raising your children, you tell them, hey, if you do well in your grades, I'm going to give you a new, a new toy car or a new uh, PS4, PS5. But if you mess up and you get great, we don't take you on vacation. We just and us, hire somebody to look after you and you, you, don't, you don't get any gifts. That, that's incentivizing actions and making sure there are consequences for actions. So, excuse me, uh, raising children, if you don't do that, you're gonna raise the most poor children in the world. So Kingsman style now, let's look at my style. My style kind of like tries to blend uh, a couple of things, like I said. When I'm training, I'm a coach and a visionary. So I'm a little bit sweet when I'm training. I'm sweet, I give you examples, I'm patient, I listen to you. When it's time for work schedule though, then I'm that general, you know what I'm saying? So I'm authoritarian and military when, when it's time for work and schedules. When it's time for fun and empathy, I let you have a voice. What do you guys prefer? We have a bride, do I let people, everybody can have a talk. Um, the problem with this old style in the Kingsman Academy is, is um, passionate people are needed in my space. So if, you, if I have a hand up, if I inherit a, a space, that I have so many unpassionate people, then I'm going to struggle. This, this technique does not work immediately. But the good thing is you can teach uh, passion from first principle. That's the advantage I have because I train students from first year, then I give them other passion. And when they become PhD student, it doesn't matter anymore. They already have the dream in their mind. Uh, how do I do this? Sometimes when I'm hiring, every time I'm hiring, I'm hiring the best. So uh, knowledge and character is important to me, not just knowledge, choosing sub team leaders, I choose the guys that are accessible guys and the stretchable guys, guys you can call 11 p.m. at night, seven like, prof, say no more. And they open their laptop and they get things done. The goal is to have the military juice, which is the regimentality and to match it toe to toe with empathy because we still care about people. So ultimately we do. So an ability to switch between work and play. When it's work, we're military. When we're playing, we let you have a voice. Implementation, how have I implemented this? Uh, give the mission briefs, strong drills, clear communication. I don't, I don't live in a limbo way. You don't know what to do. I, I give you clear communication. So at the entry level, like I said, I'm operational. Uh, second and third, I give you tactical and they have an inner circle that keeps me in check as well so that I'm not a dictator. So I have these guys that trust me. I trust them and they've been with me for a while. And when it's time to vote about things or to decide they're the ones, they're my strategic team. They're the ones that tell me that will not work and we vote uh, to, to suit the rest of the population. Feedback loop, anybody that goes through me and has done so well, I keep them in my loop. So I invite them back in what I call homecomings to come and help me to train people coming behind. Um, I let people keep their identities. So if you're Muslim, Christian, pagan, whatever, you meet, you join my team, you keep your identity, that's fine. I'm not gonna criticize your beliefs. However, when you are with me, working with me at that time, you're at work, uh, we are your identity. So I am you, you're me. So you see a reflection of seven me and then you, I can influence you even more. Strong hierarchy. I don't believe in uh, everybody can say whatever they want and whatever, whatever. I don't think that actually works. I think it's sweet politically to say that, but I don't think it works. So to eliminate confusion, like they always say, I put this thing there just to, for some giggles. Who is your daddy? You know, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't know your papa be, but they difficult. So I always make sure that um, this hierarchy that is strong. Uh, you know who you're reporting to, you know what you're supposed to be doing. Strong metrics and rubrics to be fair, to make sure you're consistent in the way you rate people. Conflict resolution, there's been a whole talk on that today. So I was very happy because I wasn't going to go deep into it at all. So like you can have two good folks uh, connecting very bad. So you have to make them see the good in both of them to say, 
I'm like, you'll be good girl. Even this baby a very nice woman. But the problem I say, the day you guys met, somebody was not feeling good that day. So on that case, you help them to resolve. Uh, the difference is even better. Sub-team shuffle. I don't keep one sub-team in my team together for too long because that's, they're going to rebel. So they're going to spend too much time together. Then now they feel like they know stuff and then they come back and they're disrupting stuff and they don't want someone else. So I do what I call shuffling. So when I have, there's a task and there's another task, I shuffle teams around so that you, you work with anyone that we say. So you learn to, not like, hey, I want to work with, work with white folks alone. Or I want to work with Indian folks alone. You don't get to do that in my team. So wins can save your team. Uh, that one is just a general comment. Trust me, if you plan very well and you have some early wins, it's, it's such a confidence booster. Building your reputation will also help you because some people, when you're a leader, you have to be able to point to a portfolio of evidence that I've been there, I've done that. Guys, follow me. But if you're saying, I think this is the right way and they look at your CV and it's not there, it's, it's going to be a problem. So um, I augment all of that uh, implementation of that military style in this empathy components because it's very important, especially in the con my context. So measure diplomacy and zero politics. Politics can have many interpretations, but in this interpretation, I take it to be some form of deceit because my, my squad can talk among themselves and realize that you're not consistent and then I lose their confidence. I can, I can build trust. So I build trust among them by making sure I, am, I, I, don't, know, I don't play politics between them. Um, the guys that I work with, the legacy guys, uh, maybe I get a PhD student from a different background. I kind of manage them, uh, but the ones that are very hungry in my team, I, I, I call them vampires. So I keep feeding the vampires. Those guys are very hungry, very agile. They, they want to do, to do everything. Next 10 years job, they want to do it now. I make sure people get recognition for their work. Trust me, a leader shouldn't be there taking recognition for, for the work of people that are working under you. I buy awards and uh, for achievers, celebrating their birthdays with them. I'm gonna show you our Insta Instagram page now where you see where, where all of that goes on. Public scoring, if someone is very arrogant in the team, I love doing this to them. I call them into a meeting, there are 25 people there and I'm like, uh, okay, so you did that. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was right. Okay, that's fine. But you know you were wrong, yeah, the facts. They say, oh, oh, yeah, I messed up. I'm like, yeah, but now they have to admit it in the face of 25 people. So in the next time, they're not in a haste to make such decisions. Rather, they will just take, stay back and be more sure before they, they, they allow their pride to take control. Social justice is making sure everybody gets the same scoring when, the time, when, it, when time, bullets come flying, everybody can get the same treatment. All animals are equal. Really? I don't think so. I think I like the appearance, appearance of uh, uh, equality and not necessarily the, the actual implementation of it. Because there'll be times you might have to treat some people differently maybe because they don't have the strength to carry the same scoring as someone else. So you might have to just keep them by, by treating them differently, but not because you want to give them an edge. Scoring a crying child, today is an example. So uh, if someone is already feeling so bad about their actions in my team, I don't want to make them feel more bad than they already feel. If someone feels nothing, that's when I want them to feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Social cohesion, jokes, parties, team building, of course, you show the human part of you when you're a leader. I do that to my team. Curating a happy, safe space. My students love being in my space all day long. We make a uh, joint playlist, play some of my piano. I play some Nigerian I like music for them. Some Orlando or some Osa Debe. They, they know a lot about Nigerian culture. They, they've, some of them have eaten our food through me and all of those things. Results. Well, I got many undergraduate students to start publishing, which is not even part of the curriculum, but then the, the brain was pop, pump, uh, popping too much. So they had to do a lot of things. Uh, team wins, uh, we've won many, many things. I've flown my students all around, both nationally and internationally, won several awards. Intellectual property for our institution, which is UJ. Uh, and even before I got to UJ, I was doing the same for vets. Uh, the money team, my team is called the money team because uh, every student get paid. Uh, in December, some students were getting paid up to 25,000 rand uh, in, in monthly pay. And they were undergraduates at second year. So you're guaranteed to pay your own fees if you're in my team because you're gonna learn so much because of your discipline and, and then you can, you can hand some money and take care of your family. So work experience on their CVs is one of the benefits. And if you want to see more of the stuff I do, you can check uh, Kingsman Academic Official on uh, Instagram. Finally, high performance. I believe for high performance to be the case, you need some military deal. It doesn't have to be like, I think my own is 50-50. I think I'm 50% military and 50% empathy. But you can, you can go even 20 military, some, something that a routine. Something that is very clear, communication, clear communication, and making sure there are consequences for actions. 
So high performance results, knowledge and character. Um, those are the things that come out at the end of the day. Lessons I've learned. Uh, I think uh, here are the things that are comments generally from my own experience. I think I like to tell people that, you know, we care about your feelings. Don't get us wrong. It's not like we are emotionless, but they are your feelings. They're your feelings. It's the way you feel. So you also have to manage them and they are your responsibilities to manage. So we need results. That's bottom line. So it doesn't mind, matter if I'm a politician that people like me, I go to parties. In Nigeria, you see governors that can dance. Uh, I'm not naming names, but yeah. But then all of that is so good. People love you, but then what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? In the end, um, the model leader is the one with good results. I believe so. I believe at the end of the day, the leader who everybody would say remember for their work is the guy who had good results. Baby kissing is good. Trust me, I love when people, I, I would like people to love me. But if that's at the cost of actually getting results, then I better don't like me and thank me later in the future when you look at your career and you saw me as a leader that actually helped you to grow. So if you want me to be kissing you or uh, making coffee for you to be to look like a good manager, then you found the wrong guy. So we cannot make everybody happy because in my space, my, my experience is that I do a lot of disruption and innovation in my space and it affects uh, the legacy establishment. Those are the guys that like things to be done their way and then ends the fight back. And final note, no matter how, uh, no matter the kind, uh, no matter the kind of leader you, you decide to be, uh, you still have to be fair in judgment. So I, th I, I think this part breaks teams. When I know that someone is treated better than me, I'm demotivated. So if you're very fair in your judgment and you treat people well, those two things, I think you're already on your way of becoming a, a, a good leader. Here's just a picture of a sub team of mine that we, we were the CITA captain together in 2019. Quite a diverse team. Everybody just dovetails as if they are, they are family members. Everybody, nobody remembers their race and all of that. And that is what I have for you. Thank you for the opportunity to the organizers. For everybody listening to me, thank you very much as well. I uh, will take your questions. Boom. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Professor Abedjide, for this wonderful session. Thank you so much, Professor Abedjide, for taking us through the topic Adaptable Mobility Strategies and Leadership Experience from Building the Kingsman Academy. So, Professor Abedjide started with the story behind the Kingsman Academy along with his profile. Then it took us through the basics on leadership. So I must say, I love your leadership style, especially the King's Man style. The thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. As the military do, okay. do, the way you do people, to get them to work, even when they don't feel like working. Yeah. That's your place if you have any questions for people, so they do they, could you kindly signify? Okay, we have Olumuiwa. Olumuiwa, can you please unmute? You can ask your question. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. It's such a, a great uh, presentation you just did. I have a few questions. I actually love, love your, your leadership skill, you understand? Because I, I believe um, uh, there are some times that uh, you just can't allow people to do what they want. You just, have, you just need to make them to do what is right. So um, with respect to military, uh, with respect to your leadership uh, style, what would you uh, like, what would you say about um, hierarchy? Hierarchy in the sense that um, um, I understand that in the military, uh, a young person uh, uh, reporting uh, as a superior authority is actually wrong. But in the same vein, what if the wrong, the, the superior authority is doing the wrong? how will such um, a scenario be managed? Thank you, sir. All right, uh, thank you very much um, for that question. I, I think it goes back to the, to the trusted leadership. So like I said, remember I put the disclaimer somewhere there, I said, you know, this works like ch a charm because those kids trust me with everything. And sometimes when the leadership is wrong and they tell you to go do the wrong stuff, it's a disaster. I know it doesn't feel great. And that's why I'm not going 100% on like military. I have that. So I have a component in my structure, three components. Trans, um, the one I call operational, where you just have to take orders. You just move forward, come to work tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, get this done before midnight. Then I have the part that is tactical. The tactical uh, layer of my leadership skill, uh, strategy, and the strategic layer, those two guys can actually call me to check. I give them the ticket to do that. They were shocked that I could change my mind about things even when they told me to, I said, no, 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 guys, 
you stay here debating with me, argue with me that doing this or applying for that is wrong. And they're like, okay, sir, this is what we think is wrong. And then after a while, like, you know what? Yeah, I, do I have a majority? Can you guys vote? So in that small, those two smaller components, I have like a mini democratic structure there. Because if I don't, then I'm going to be a, a dictator, like I said. I'm just going to be doing the only things. And I've also not learned. Because over the years, I've also evolved myself. So to your question, if it's 100% military, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you can plot a coup, though, like, uh, you know, like Burkina Faso. You can pull off a Burkina Faso. But other than that, if it's 100% military, I'm sorry, there's nothing you can do. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you for that question. Do you have any other questions to you move quickly to the next? Okay, so on the aspect of uh, Professor Dejide, on the aspect of asking the important leadership question, there was a question you asked on the desk. You said, are you ready? So I'm thinking, is it possible for one to be ready to take leadership role or leadership role? What do you think? Do you ever get ready to take such roles? Yeah, absolutely, Chair. Uh, I, think, I think if you're not ready, you're destroying everyone and destroying yourself as well. So, the difference between being ready sometimes is just six months or, or just a year or even three years before you are ready. I, I'll give an example. So in South Africa, there's a transformation agenda. However, the pace of transformation and the pace of training black competent people, those are at two different paces. So you are training people slower, however, you are transforming quicker, meaning now you have to feed people that are not so well trained into leadership roles. You are, you are breaking them because that guy would have spent the next two years learning under, learning nice mm -hmm. stuff under another leader, being matured enough and being ready to lead. Then you have a great leader, but then you put someone who is confused about everything, who thinks um, when there is a problem, like going aggressive is the only answer or whatever, or their personality just comes and takes charge of their whole leadership portfolio. So you don't want that. So I think there's something called being ready. I believe so. I believe uh, for me, I, I had to wait to be ready. Uh, trust me, there are many times I just preferred being a team player and just supply my, my portion to the team and not having to tell people what to do. But when you're ready, you, you're going to know you're ready. I don't think it's a qualification thing. I think it's mostly of emotional part of things, plus content. You have to be strong in your content. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Abedido, for this time. I'm sure we have all the questions you have at you. Lots and lots of questions, but because of time, Please. Yeah, no problem. Yes, we can always send you some questions, maybe through your email or something. Thank you so no much. No problem. For that.